Hello there and welcome to yet another video on how we can make the learning of math fun. In today's video, we're going to talk about the calculator app on the TI Inspire CX2. Now, this video is for beginners only. So if you're an advanced user of the TI Inspire CX2, then this video is probably not for you. This is only for those who are beginners. So having said that, let's get on. What I'm sharing today is the non-cast version of the TI Inspire CX2. I decided to go ahead with the non-cast version um, for no rhyme or reason. Just, I just decided to go ahead with it. So let's get on with it and add a calculator page because we're talking about a calculator page. And for those of you who did not watch my video on problems and pages, this 1.1 refers to problem one, page one. This is a calculator page. If you haven't seen the video on problems and pages, the link to that video is somewhere up there. You might just want to go and take a look at it. Uh, so this is the calculator page. On the calculator page, first, let's talk about some of the special keys that will be useful to you. The first one is this key to the right of nine. I call it the template key. It's like a flyout menu. All right. So you've got several templates here. You've got the template for uh, the fraction sign. You can enter a rational function. You've got uh, other templates here like the exponent, the square root, uh, the nth root, e to the exponential function, logarithmic function. These entries here are... Uh, uh, piecewise functions, templates for piecewise functions, uh, templates for the derivative, the definite integral, absolute value function. So this is a very important key to know where it is, okay? It's a flyout menu for the template key. The other flyout menu I want to bring your attention to is the trig functions key. This is right to the left of seven, the number seven. If you hit uh, the trig key, you get another flyout menu for the uh, trig functions and the corresponding inverse trig functions. So you know where to find that key also. The third key with the flyout menu I want to uh, bring your attention to is this key to the left of H. You'll see pi written on it. So if you hit that menu, you'll get a uh, flyout menu for pi. Now, at the time of the exam, I'd encourage you to use this particular option for pi and not just for exams. I said just get into the habit, even in your practice. Uh, just use this uh, value of pi. Don't enter any other approximation. Here's also the key for I, the imaginary uh, number uh, uh, square, square root of negative one, infinity sine, e, theta, degree sign. Uh, so this is another important flyout menu that you must know, okay? The next thing that I want to bring your attention to is this, uh, uh, this combination or a shortcut. When you enter control division, you will get that template for the fraction. So you don't need to actually go into the, um, this flyout menu I showed you. If you know that shortcut, you can use that because in any calculation, sometimes this just becomes very easy to use. So Having said that, let's just perform some random calculations so you know how to use a calculator with random normal calculations. If you want to do nine times two, not that you need to use a calculator for nine times two, but I'm just saying, you know, you can just play around with uh, some simple calculations, two to the power of, let's say a negative. Use this key for negative, okay? This is for subtraction, this is for negative, two to the power of a negative. Uh, let's put a fractional index this time. So you bring back that key control division and you've got a fractional index this time. And let's say you've got a negative three over seven. I just made up some strange thing, you know, and use the arrow key to come out of that index. And here you've got the answer in three SF. So I would just encourage you to spend a few minutes, you know, identifying the keys. It's almost like a treasure hunt using the calculator, like a normal scientific calculator, the normal calculations that you would do. So after you've familiarized yourself with the basic layout of the keypad, identifying where to go to find the square root key, the log key and those things, the next thing that you must do is to go to the menu key. I've often referred to the menu key as a lighthouse. The first thing under the menu is actions. And there you see this word called define. You may not necessarily see the power of this key right now if you have not already done the topic of functions in your school. But if you've not yet done the topic of functions in your school, there's no need to worry. I've made a video on functions, actually a series of videos on functions. The link to it is somewhere up there. Please go and check it out. So if you want to define a function, you can just type in F bracket X. And here you can just say equal to, remember the syntax, okay? Define and f of x equal to, and I can just make a simple linear function. It must say done if you've entered the syntax correctly, okay? Let's go over it again. I'll go to menu, actions, define. Let's enter a new function this time, g of x and equal to, and let's try this time just say we want the square function, okay, the parabola like square. And once you hit enter, it must say done. That means these two functions are defined. Now, if you want to find the value of the function at a point, let's say x is equal to 0 0.4, then
then you don't need to enter the expression again. You can just say f of 0 0.4, hit enter, and it will calculate the value for you just like that. Even if it's a composite function like f of g of, let's say, 0 0.4, you don't need to substitute 0 0.4 into that expression and then calculate it that way. You can just put it this way and, and the calculator will give the solution just like that. So this power in using this define key. But there is another cool way to define a function and that's using the assign key. So let's define another function h of x using the assign key, which is control template, the key to the right of nine. Control and that template key will give you the symbol colon equal to and there you can define your function as you want so let's say we wanted to define a rational function and we'll make this x over something like 2x minus 1 hit enter and if it's defined correctly remember what should happen the calculator must say done so it's now that's defined correctly you can simply if you want if the question is to find the value of h at something like um negative 3.5 you can just say negative 3.5 and internally the calculator will do the substitution for you and you can hit enter. Now to understand the relevance of this feature, let's just take an example from the IGCC question paper. In this question, we've got f of x uh, given to us as 4x plus 2, g of x given to us as 5 minus 2x, and h of x is given to us as x square minus 3. Three different functions are given to us. And in question number part A and part B, we got to find the value. I'm going to illustrate the working of these two parts A and B on the calculator. So I'm going to insert a new problem this time. For those of you who have not seen my video on problems and pages, I encourage you to go and take a look at that video. The link to it is somewhere up there. So I've entered a new problem. It says 2.1. That means it's problem number two, page one, which is also a calculator page. I'm going to enter f of x as they have given here. I'm going to use the assign key because I think that's cool. And f of x is given to us as 4x plus 2. And when you hit enter, it should say done if you've entered it correctly with the correct syntax. G of x in the question was given to us as, let's using the sign key, we'll say that's 5 minus 2x. That's what was given the question. And they've given us h of x. Again, we've entered h of x. A sign key is control and the key to the right of 9. And this is x square. Find the x squared there. Minus 3. And when I hit enter, it should say done. Now the part A is just to find the value of g at negative three. So you can just go G and it become bold. That means the calculator recognizes that G has been entered in the memory and it has been defined somewhere. So G of negative three, when you say G of negative three, it will give you the value of G of negative three as 11. And the next one was to find F of H of two. And when you say enter, it will do the internal substitution and give you the answer as six. So using this feature, it becomes very easy for us to solve questions like these in part A and part B. But take a look at part C, where it says find x when f of x is equal to negative 10. How do we do this using the calculator? Coming up. So under menu, we'll go to algebra. Now feel free to go and explore the other options on the menu. This is just for a beginner level, this particular video. There are other ways to go and use many other features. You can go and convert uh, a number from a decimal to a fraction. You can find the factor. Actually, that's very cool. I'll show that. And why don't I show that right now? Okay, so if I just go factor, and I just put some number, 4357, 4356 is what I've entered. But if I hit 4356 and I hit enter, it will actually give me the prime decomposition, okay? Two, Q, two square, three, Q, two square, three square times 11 square. So that's pretty interesting. So there are many such cool things that you can explore on your own. In this video, I just wanted to demonstrate some of the basic features that's required, whether you're an IB student or an IGCC student. So without getting sidetracked further, in order to answer that question, we need to go to menu algebra and there's this feature called numerical solve. When I hit numerical solve, it'll say n solve. I enter that equation as it is, okay, as it is. And I just type in f of x and notice f became bold. That means the calculator is recognizing that f has been assigned. It has been defined. It is in the memory of the calculator. So I just say f of x is equal to 10. Okay, that's what we want to do because f of x is equal to minus 10 actually. So I'll just come back to this and I'll make a change here. I'll use this uh, key for the negative sign. Now the syntax in any TI calculator, whenever you enter an equation, you have to say comma X. Okay, that means it's saying, uh, find the value of X or that is the variable you're looking for. Okay, so what are the variable? If it was Y, you have to put comma that particular variable. If it is T, you have to say comma T because that's the variable you're solving for. In this case, it was F of X. So we say F of X is equal to negative 10 comma X because that's the variable you're solving for. And then when you say enter, you'd get negative three as the answer. That means when X is negative three, 
f of x is equal to negative 10. So this is a very nice way to use the end solve feature, but you can also solve other equations. Like when you go to menu and you just go on algebra and numerical solve, now that you know where it is, you can even type in end solve if you want to, but I'll, we'll do that in the next step, okay? So let's say the equation was an involving an exponent. So it's something like two to the x and uh, equal to three to the power, uh, just as three x. And remember, you're solving for x, so comma x, and when you say enter, it gives you 0.4458, and that's correct up to 3SF. Now, while we're using this feature, I must say something. You know, at the time of the exam, or even every classwork, every teacher will require that you must show the working. You should show the working. But here's a pro tip. Do your working and use this feature to check whether you, what you've done is right or wrong. If you're getting a different answer, that, that means something you've done is wrong. So even at the time of a test, before you've turned it in, you can check your working and say, okay, but the answer according to the calculator is something else. So maybe something I've done is wrong. That will make you check your work in a new way, in a different way. Using and solve, you can also solve fractional equations. Let me demonstrate. So menu, algebra, numerical solve, and let's enter a fractional equation. Control, division will give you the fraction template. And let's just enter something like 2x minus uh, 3 divided by 5. Use the arrow key to come out of the fraction template and then let's put a minus sign and let's introduce another fraction. So let's call this x divided by, uh, let's make the 7. Arrow key to come out of the fraction, let's make it equal to 11. And the syntax is comma x because we're solving for x and when we hit enter. Just like that you'll get the value of x that satisfies that fractional equation. Again, do all your working, but this is a good way to check that your answers are right. But the action doesn't stop here. We can use this end solve feature to solve other kinds of equations also. And I will explain what that means. If I were to insert a new problem, okay, doc insert and a new problem. So this is problem three, page one, and it's still the same type of page. We're talking about calculator app today. So this is problem three, page one. And on this page, I'm going to insert a function by defining it as, let's just define a sine function this time, all right? Something like sine of 2x perhaps, and when we hit enter, it should say done. Now, watch what I'm gonna do. I can use that end solve, so I'll go to algebra, numerical solve, and I can solve an equation like this. I can use the template key, pull out the template for the derivative of a function, I just enter d by dx, and here I'm not even entering sine of 2x, I'll enter f of x. Can you see that f became bold? That means the calculator is recognizing that in this problem, problem 3, f of x is sine of 2x. So I've entered in the end solve the derivative of f of x, and now I'm saying derivative of f of x is equal to 0, comma x. What that means is I'm asking for the solution or the value of x where the derivative of this function becomes 0. And when I hit enter, it will say 0 0.785, that's in radians, okay? So we can also use the end solve option to solve equations that involve a derivative. However, there are limitations to what the end solve can do and cannot do. And there are other options on the algebra menu, like solving the system of linear equations and polynomial tools. These we will cover in part two of this video on the calculator app. I hope you don't miss that video. I'll see you in that video.